بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم علی اللہ مدد فرما علی اللہ مدد فرما الواحد القاحا علی اللہ مدد فرما حسبن اللہ و نیم الوکیل و نیم الولا و نیم النسی حسبن اللہ و نیم الوکیل و نیم الولا و نیم النسی حسبن اللہ و نیم الوکیل و نیم الولا و نیم النسی حسبن اللہ و نیم الوکیل و نیم الولا و نیم النسی حسبن اللہ و نیم الوکیل و نیم الولا و نیم النسی حسبن اللہ و نیم الوکیل و نیم الولا و نیم النسی حسبن اللہ و نیم الوکیل و نیم الولا و نیم النسی حسبن اللہ و نیم الوکیل و نیم الولا و نیم النسی حسبن اللہ و نیم الوکیل و نیم الولا و نیم النسی حسبن اللہ و نیم الوکیل و نیم الولا و نیم النسی حسبن اللہ و نیم الوکیل و نیم الولا و نیم النسی شکر اللہ و الحمدللہ شکر اللہ و الحمدللہ We have gathered here today to continue studying our book What is Soul and today we are going to have session 6 on chapter 5 and today we are going to cover question 88 and 92 as they are related, kind of related. So before we go into our question, I'm going to review this slide because it's a continuation of question 88. In question 88, we had discussed the concept of army of God. Army of God is mentioned in chapter 5, verse 56, which says, And whoever is an ally of Allah and his messenger, and those who believed indeed the party of Allah, they will be the predominant. Truly, the reward or the win is for the God's army. Why? And we had discussed that in order for us to be the army of God, we need to stay in remembrance and all other conditions we had talked about. In opposed to that, there is another verse in Quran, chapter 58, verse 19, which says, Shaitan has overtaken them, so he has made them forget the remembrance of Allah. They are the party of Shaitan. Verily, it is the party of Shaitan that will be the losers. His bush shayateen is the term mentioned in this verse in Arabic. So just to recall that as we all know, there's good and bad, evil and good. Either we are an army of God or we are an army of shaitan. And there are very clear-cut criteria given to us. And the most important criteria is remembrance. As Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah, Allahumma Salila, Muhammad Ibu Ali Muhammad, our soul be sacrificed to this Imam. Imam has very clearly says 
યાદગીરી રાખવાનું કામ ઘણું જ કઠણ છે કારણ કે શેતાન તમારા પાછળ જ લાગેલું છે ઇટ ઇઝ વેરી ડિફિકલ્ટ ટુ સ્ટે ઇન રિમેમ્બરન્સ બિકોઝ શેતાન ઇઝ આફ્ટર યુ and mola really emphasizes very beautifully in very many farmans which we had discussed in that class about remembrance so those who stay in remembrance they continue to strive to become better they become the part of god's army and surely the reward is for them in opposed to that those who become lazy for whatever reason they become busy distracted by the worldly chores or tests for whatever reason they leave the remembrance of allah automatically they become the army of shaitan so it is the remembrance which keeps the momin in the army of god so after this understanding we will talk about this question which says momins are god's army what is their relation to his army as mentioned in surah fath so we have understood momins who are army of the god but then chapter 48 talks about that army so what is the relationship that's the question question number 88 When we look at surah fath which is 48 verse 4 this is the verse and i have given you the transliteration so those who cannot read arabic can stay uh, focus on transliteration and this is just an exercise to understand the tanzil the way it's been revealed to us we all know these words it's just that when we look at arabic we may get intimidated because we don't know the language but in reality if you were to start little by little practicing and trying to read the transliteration will be able to get some words and i would i have highlighted these words so let me first read this in arabic and if you can read with me try and stay on the transliteration who wallazi anzala sakinata who wallazi anzala sakinata fi qulubil mu'mina the focus of this verse walillahi junudus samawati wal ardi and then this word alimun hakimun we do know name alim and hakim now let's look at the translation the translation says it is he who sent down tranquility into the hearts of the believers that they may add faith to their faith for to allah belong the forces of heavens and the earth and allah is full of knowledge and wisdom wohi hai jisne muslimano ke dilon mein sukoon dal diya taaki apne iman ke sath hi sath aur bhi iman mein badh jaye aur aasmano aur zameen ke lashkar allah hi ke hain or allah taala dana wa hikmat hai so if you were to those who know urdu they will realize there is no word muslimano in arabic here so that is why it is so important those who are more interested and they want to learn more it is very important practice to continue to look at the transliteration to be able to identify how they are adding words according to their own beliefs so this is the tanzil this is what the translation says now let us try and study the tawil of this verse now this is how it's been translated in the book what is soul so i have picked up the same wordings so let's look at the translation the way we had seen 
It is he who sent down tranquility into the hearts of the believers that they may add faith to their faith for to Allah belong the forces of the heavens and the earth. And Allah is full of knowledge and wisdom. So this book translates it in this way. God, he, who is he? He is God. God is who? Who sent down peace. What peace? Of spirituality. Batini sukun. Into the hearts of moments that they may add faith to their faith and to Allah belong the armies of the heavens and the earth. And Allah is knower and wise. Now let's look at a few words here. So when we look at the word here, heavens, it's in plural. Asmano or zameen. Right? In Urdu we read asmano or zameen. Asmano, heavens is in plural, whereas earth is in singular. How strange is that? When we look at the asman, it is only one. And if we were to ask scientists, they'll say, oh, there's nothing. It's just gases. There's nothing. But very interestingly, in Quran, it talks about heavens, plural, asman. Why would that be? What is the reason that it mentions Asman in plural. What is the tavi of the word heavens? And then earth is singular. Surely the earth represents here physical world. And we have also learned that earth is mustajib or a generic term momin. Those who are new or they do not know what we are talking about here, I would encourage them to ask for the lectures related to this, and you will be able to catch up. Heavens here actually refers to ranks, spiritual ranks. Earth is always one. Mustajib or the moment is the absolute earth. And then above the mustajib, there are other ranks. So when we talk of heavens, actually we are talking of Hududadeen, the spiritual ranks in current time. So Mustajib would be earth and the heaven or Asman for Mustajib would be Mazun. And for Mazun, Mazune Mutallak would be the Asman, whereas Mazune Mehdud would be the Zami. So this is how the ranking goes. And that is why when Allah says that the armies of the heavens and the earth belong to Allah. These are the God's army. Those who are on the ladder. Ladder of what? To improve themselves, to climb up. Who do they deal? So in other words, what we are saying that the spiritual and the physical armies are all belonging to Allah. Now, the question would be, who is the chief of this army? Who is the chief of this army? Surely, Prophet in their Imam, during the time of prophethood, Prophet is the chief of the army. Today, we have no prophets. It's the time of Imam. So who is the chief of the army? Imam is the chief of the army. It is the army who are means through which spiritual peace is sent down. It's descended, descended upon, it descends upon Mominin. How? How does it descend? Depending on their knowledge and practice. Elmo Amal. So let me repeat again. This is very important to understand that we now understand that all the armies, let it be physical or the spiritual, all the armies belong to Allah. And Allah sends peace, batini sukun, to his armies. How does he do that? It is the army who are the means through which 
spiritual peace descends upon every moment upon every moment according to their knowledge and practice ilm amal zikr ibadat with giriyawzai depending on their practice and their knowledge they will receive the peace the higher the rank higher the peace so through these armies spiritual peace descends upon every moment this is very important point here it's a kulia if we were to ever say why some people feel anxious than others in jamaat probably living in the same difficulties of life why their reaction is different it is because it depends who is in the army of god and we all learn in order to become the army of god one has to be in remembrance and remembrance is a very broad term it is not only nurani time ibadat it is not only dua it is not only learning knowledge it is not only doing zikr it is all these things those who stay in remembrance they become the army of allah and when they become army of the allah their chief is there how how do we say that how do we understand it is very simple if we are mu'min our amirul mu'minin our chief our sardar is there to help us how does he help he expects us to stay in remembrance when we stay in remembrance we are automatically army of the god when we are army of the god we become the means of receiving peace the higher the rank they receive the most peace and they help and give it to all others so this piece of a spirituality is descended upon all mu'minins through the army of the god and this army is not limited to spiritual army it includes physical as well as spiritual army now in the same question it talks about this verse too which is only this one uh, in arabic if you were to look at it walillahi junudu samawati wal ard wa kana wa kana allah azizun hakim to allah belong the armies of the heavens and the earth and allah is mighty full of wisdom it's almost same in fact those who would like to do this zikr if they understand the importance of becoming the army this is a zikr from the quran walillahi junudu samawati wal ard when we do this zikr we are calling upon this army to bring peace to us walillahi junudu samawati wal ard so beautiful zikr again we are understanding the concept of army of the god which we had studied in another question and today we have taken that a step further with the help of surah fata to understand how the peace is descended upon these mu'minins now let's review this second question which is question number 92 in this question it says salman is the gate from among the gates of paradise tell us about this prophetic tradition if salman is the gate what does that mean how does it how do we understand that so we all know salman a farsi who was not muslim he was fire worshipper zoroastrian and then he travels seeking for truth becomes christian and then finally he finds prophet muhammad and he becomes muslim whenever we talk of our imam we say we are always in imam's jannat because imam is our paradise and this prophetic tradition this hadith says that salman is the gate of paradise so we are trying to understand that 
again prophet in his time was the living paradise he was the living paradise of the spirituality of luminosity batni and nurani jannat it was prophet in his time he is the one who said man kum to mola faaza ali mola so mola ali became the amirul mu'minin ar mola ar living jannat and today the jannat's name is kari and very beautifully in this ginan if you were to study this ginan it says it is by peer satguru e ji nabi to jeev ka datar hai e ji nabi to jeev ka datar hai jinhe kalma sunaya je momin maan se te behishti hoega baaki gafal bhula ge ma o brother the oh brother the prophet is the savior of the souls who recited the kalima now kalima here is submission obedience those moments who accept it will enter paradise and the negligent will go astray they will enter the paradise and we are trying to understand how come salman is the gates of paradise we are trying to understand this from all these references another beautiful ginan by peer hasan kabiridi ag gafal tha taaku muni var kiya ag gafal tha taaku muni var kiya hazir shah dikhaya shah dekhe je daave padya so nishte dozak sadhariya mohammed made believers of those who had become ignorant and had strayed away he showed showed them the present imam those who having seen the imam turned against him have verily gone to hell so again our peers are teaching us the same teaching that it was prophet muhammad who was the natik and who brought the talimat of islam and then he showed us the imam he showed the right path to us that after me follow the imam those who after knowing the imam who left him automatically became the army of shaitan they've gone to hell another ginan in which p sadardin says bhani peer sadardin tamaro aadhar sacha momon ne de jo bihisht didar pi sadar din teaches o oh lord we depend upon you depend upon your support only best to the true moments with heavenly vision this is better translation sometimes you would see bihisht didar the didar of paradise heavenly vision is much better translation but when we look at this word bihisht didar it sounds like that we peer is praying for us that we would have the didar of the bihisht now bihisht is a place if paradise is a place we never would have the didar we never would use the word didar for a place we use the word didar for our imam for a living paradise and that's how we understand that when our peers are saying bihisht didar it is a living paradise our imam is the paradise for us so we do understand that concept so let's review again if salman is the gate how is he the gate and we understood that prophet muhammad was the living paradise in his time and today shah karim is the living paradise where does salman fit into all this scenario so important principle for us to learn which is also called kuliya kuliya is also called universal which means here the kuliya which we are learning is everything is living in our tarika everything is living how do we understand this everything is living when we 
learn this knowledge of Ginan, Farman, Quran, it comes so easy, so joyously in our heart that it increases the faith. Remember in the first verse in 48, chapter, chapter 48, verse 4, it said that it adds faith for them. They have the Iman, but it adds to their faith, meaning that the Iman is also in their job. When we study these concepts and internalize its true understanding, it increases our faith. So in this Ginan, he says, Eji Imam Pechano, to Siddhak Durust, Tusa Jinna Jannat Paiga Thanji. If you recognize the Imam, in true essence, your Imam will be sound and unshakable, and then you will attain. An abode in paradise. Abode in paradise. If Imam is the living paradise, how do we get abode in paradise? That's what is. It is all about. We are trying to understand and learn and get that abode for ourselves. Salman Fars in his lifetime, he was able to do that, and that's how Prophet said that he is the gate from among the gates of paradise. When we read this critically, he's not the only one who is the gate. That means there are so many gates. Now let's study this Quranic verse, which says, chapter 29, verse 64. And this worldly life is not but diversion and amusement. This worldly life is diversion and amusement. And indeed, the home of hereafter, that is the eternal life, if only they knew. Or dunya ki ye zindagi mehas khel tamasha hai. Aakhirat ke ghar ki zindagi hi, hakiki zindagi hai. Kaash ye jante hote. Kaash ye jante hote. When we read this, that hereafter, the life in hereafter is the true life. That tells us that the hereafter is a living. It's not a place where everybody is dead there. Everybody is living there. If the hereafter is living, paradise is living. Everything is living. So if the paradise is living, the gates also has to be living. If paradise is living, the gates is also has to be living. Living and speaking persons. When we realize that, what we are saying, we are now understanding that Salman Farsi, because of all what we know about him, the way he was a staunch Mormon, a very strong follower of Mawla Ali. During his lifetime, he elevated himself so much so, he became the army of the God. He became the gate of paradise. So if anyone wants to enter the paradise, we'll have to pass through the gate. Salman e Farsi is the gate. And we all know that Prophet had said that Salman Farsi is from El Ebed. El Ebed is Panjshtan Park, Nurani family. How can a moment elevate themselves so much so that they become part of al -Abad. We have so many examples, not only Salman and Farsi. From recent past, we do know Rahim Basaria, Waras Rahim Basaria, his father Basaria, Rimu, Wazir Rimu. There are so many names, if you were to read Kalam Imam -e Mubin, Imam has called them that they are from my al -Abad. Meaning, during their lifetime, they attained that level, that rank, that they became gates. They became part of that living paradise. What does that mean? We have been understanding this concept of mutu kabla ante mutu. When a momina salik continues to meet all the conditions, step by step, they merge themselves with the imam. They reach to the gate. They become the living paradise, just like getting the abode in paradise. No dead, you know, no one dead can be in paradise. 
because paradise is for living people. And that is how we say, we do this zikr al-hai, the one who is alive and bring us to life, we are dead in different degrees. It's not the physical life we are talking about, it's the spiritual life. We all are at different levels, degrees of death depending on El Muhammad. A moment in Salik who continues to walk further and further, stays the army of the God and continues to climb the ladder based on Il Muhammad, what happens? They become not only the gate, but a part of the living paradise. They become one with the Imam. So Salman and Farsi here, what he had done, he had accepted the invitation to truth. And then he was inviting people to truth. He was doing the Davate Haq. He was walking on the path of light and inviting people to walk on the path of light. He himself was an example of real love. True ishq, ishq -e hakiki. He had sought the knowledge of Imam. And it is said that he had all the secrets and treasures of Imam's knowledge. A moment's very valuable treasure is his or her knowledge, knowing the secrets of Imam. That's the biggest treasure. And that's what will work when they take it with themselves in hereafter. That's their amal, that's their treasure. His treasure, a treasure of proof of marifat and mirror of spirituality. Not only that he himself became fana, had the marifat, he became the aina, aina e batin. You know, mirror of spirituality, what does that mean? If we were to look into the mirror, we would be able to see our reflection. He himself becomes, became such a mirror that the one can see batin through him. What does that mean? He was truly the army of the God. So when we talk of the army, it can be physical, it can be spiritual. From this verse, we had started our journey. All the armies belong to Allah. These armies are in different levels. These armies are in different levels. And these armies are at a physical level as well as a spiritual level. Those who are spiritual army, they are invisible, but they do need hosts. They need body. Ruh, the soul cannot be without body. So those spiritual bodies, armies of Allah, they come and they work through us who have physical body. And then those who are physically living in this world and they elevate their ranks, they also become the armies of the God. So what am I saying here? I am saying some are earthly angels, others are heavenly angels. Those who are in physical body, they continue to elevate their ranks, is Imam's mercy, Imam's faramina, Imam's guidance, that we have path of becoming an animal or an angel. So these Earthly angels are the physical army of Mola. And then there is spiritual army of Mola too. Who come to this world help us? How? Why? Those who become the army of Allah, what Allah does for them, he sends down peace of his spirituality into the hearts of Mormon. So what happens? That they may add faith to their faith. Shukran lillah, walhamdulillah, shukran lillah, walhamdulillah. If any friend has any question. All right, let's see. Does that door mean Salman Farsi was from Hudud-e-Deen? Absolutely. 
he was one of the hududedi because as soon as one becomes mustajib the one who responds and says that yes i do need the knowledge and i'm willing to meet the requirements they become the part of the ladder of the hududedi and salman al farsi was a very elevated high ranking momin he was surely hududedi can you talk more about spiritual army sure spiritual army i'm thinking of an example because i know we get uh, distracted in different direction i'm going to make it very simple let me give you a negative example because that's easier and i have given this example before to when we are going to jamaat khana and if we see somebody one of our friend and passing passing by us not saying yali madad not greeting us and the thought may enter in our heart hmm she has become proud because she has gotten this or that or you know what i told her something and now she is upset and she is not talking to me and then that thought continues to multiply and multiply and multiply now you've entered into jamaat khana but your thoughts are why didn't she say yali mother did i say this to her did i do that what had happened or oh, somebody said that or oh, it's you are continuously in that chain of thought so what had happened the army of shaitan one of the army of the shaitan who came into our, your thought came introduce one small tiny thought and the chain of reaction started now physically we are in jamaat khana but we are not in jamaat khana at all and that happens very commonly if that happens and we do witness it in our beings similarly the army of maula the angels do bring in good thoughts for those mu'minin who stay in zikr ibadat for example this mu'min or mu'mina who always stays in zikr tries and work and meets all the conditions sitting in the family gathering and family starts gossiping and this family member who is mu'mina she will no matter what who or a crook she leave that area go further away so she cannot listen why because in her heart in her in her heart there was a tiny voice telling her walk away don't be sitting here and then giving her confidence and strength to leave that party to do not be fitting in the family and leave why because they were gossiping so that energy that power that momina got it from the zikr meaning that the angels spiritually came into her being gave her the strength and she was able to move away there are friends who have actually told me this that there are family members you know we hear this term right toxic family members and they are always there taking energy out of us but this friend had shared with me that she was never never able to deal with these people and she would always feel down meeting them but now she has learned with her zikr how to avoid be there but not be there with them where did this strength come from that is the spiritual army but the spiritual army has to be invited the first condition is the remembrance when the remembrance is there the spiritual army the angels will come in your being and you will be able to listen to them and act upon them if you continue to walk further alam e khayal goes into alam e ruhaniyat there are so many more stages above that alam e khayal alam e ruhaniyat alam e mushahidat alam e khaf there are so many worlds of spirituality one would see the change in them and there are friends who are able to see that change in themselves as they meet the conditions they see the changes so the world of imagination world of spirituality 
world of dreams, world of visions, and so on. And I hope I have answered your question. Now, Alina is asking, what rank was Salman Farsi from Hudud e Din? How may I know, Alina? I am very weak, feeble. I would not know. But because Prophet Muhammad says that he is the gate of paradise, and we do know that in order to be gate, so let's take example of our house. The door is part of the house or not? Is it separate from the house? I don't think so. Door is part of the house because that whole structure is a house. So paradise and the gate of the paradise, it's part of the paradise. My understanding through knowledge would be that Salman e Farsi went through all the ranks and he was able to merge with the Imam of the time. And that's how he was himself living paradise. It is not a good idea to put ranks ourselves because we still need to have more knowledge to be truly able to know what rank he was. So when you are saying Bab, I'm saying there is more to learn to be able to understand how to realize the ranks of Mominin when they go so high, as high that they are called the part of Elebeth. When we hear that he was Elebeth, actually it tells us his rank, but it is important for us to be able to discover it ourselves. All right, so I see Nasreen is asking, can one have a choice of moving from one army to another when they realize their mistake and correct their ways and or increase their remember, remembrance more often? True, very true, yes, absolutely. As soon as one realizes, that's the beauty of walking on the path of knowledge. When we walk on the path of knowledge, immediately we become so conscious, we become so aware of every action, every thought. We start talking in these terminologies, right? Angels, my, my angels guided me, or Shaitan gave me the bazi. We become so aware and so conscious. And intentionally, we do more zikr, we set good intentions. And those all work helps us to become one with the army of Mala Baba. And remember, the first stage is not just remembrance, which we have been doing all our life, meaning saying tasbih with dua or saying dua or even sitting in Betul Khyal Ibadat. The first criteria to be on the ladder to start the journey is to say, I don't know and I need to learn. Because practices anyone can do without understanding, it's not going to take anybody anywhere. It is at the level of knowledge that one would learn and then go further. So as soon as we learn, knowledge is the key point. We start changing. As soon as we stay in remembrance, we are the army of the God. At least we started, we are on the path, shukrunillah, alhamdulillah, even if it is a first step. And we continue to move up. And moving up, you know, Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah has, in different farmans, he has said, it can take you three months to be one with him. He has said that if you want to see the light, you can see that light within three days. Three months, three days, how old we are? How long do we want to wait? But what I'm trying to say here that depending on our actions and our desire, our desperation to move up, we can expedite our journey. It can happen in three days, it can happen three months, it can happen 30 years. It all depends on us. Shukran lillah, alhamdulillah. Shukran lillah, alhamdulillah. Any other question? Yeah, Lima, Nimit Saiba. Shukran lillah, alhamdulillah. Shukran lillah, alhamdulillah. Any other questions, friends? All right, so tomorrow we will have Zikr Girya Zari session. So friends who have been learning new Zikr, do please participate in high numbers so we can offer our mehmanis, our remembrance to Mala Bapa with understanding, not of the translation, but the meaning of it. 
So when we say this zikr with meaning in our heart, it comes from really in depths of our heart and we immediately connect to our imam. So let's tomorrow get together, mehfil jamayenge, maula ko yaad karenge, inshallah ta'ala. Thank you so much, friends. Yali Madad. Yali Madad. Yali Madad. Yali Madad, Appa. Yali Madad. Yali Madad.